Okay, so next up we've got Kevin. Hello, Kevin. How are you doing today? Oh, it looks like we are missing your. Uh, you need to unmute yourself. How about now? Now we're amazing. Good. <laughs> Great. All right. So Kevin is one of our open uh, hardware's uh, open hardware in academia fellows. And we're excited to hear what you've yeah, got to share. Joining us from you. Well, hard to follow sloths. My microscopes aren't as pretty. No. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm a builder of hardware. Here too. Here. Oh yeah, I'm sure there are fans of microscopes and sloths as equals. It's it's. I'm I feel like the Venn diagram are. overlaps a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're probably right. Let me share here. So, um, so I am a typical academic that I will show slides. Uh, let's see here. See if you can see this. But this can be very informal. So I'm very uh, interested in trying to build hardware, seeing what cells uh, do. Uh, everything that happens, uh, good or bad in your life, is cell based. Uh, we think, we grow, we reproduce. Uh, you know, we're born all because of cell behavior. But unfortunately, we die, we age, we get cancer because of cells. And we need a new class of imaging equipment to do that. And a lot of that is not commercially available. And I'm very passionate about sharing and building hardware. Most of my career has been spent on open software, uh, tools like ImageJ and others you may have heard of. And now we're really focused on hardware as well. And let me see if you can see these slides. So what we're trying to do is build a class of open hardware that's high resolution and is community-based and not just for our lab, but the entire community. And we're trying to use open hardware principles. And let me see why that's not playing here. So my lab is a lab of open source, open source software tools. And we're very interested in trying to build tools to understand wound healing, uh, which is cancer, diabetes, Alzheimer's, any foreign invader to your body. And we've had a lot of experience with open source software, but we're totally new to open source hardware and it was very useful to have the Oshawa collaboration to learn best practices uh, in that world. So typically, many of you probably have seen what you consider the classic microscope there in the left. Uh, and then the middle is a commercial. But then you bring in the wonderful, messy world of home-built uh, systems, which is one on the right there. And these are random shots of scopes from my lab. Just beautiful messes of cables and wires. But behind this mess is real power and how to try to share the practice and build these complex systems many of them you can't commercially buy. So uh, even if you could commercially buy them, we still want to innovate and share. But in this case, it's not about saving money. It really is sharing know-how that these are builds and approaches that aren't available elsewhere and used in all areas of, uh, of scientific research from material science to biological research. And in our case, really trying to focus on cancer and what makes cells tick. And so home-built microscopes really drive the cutting edge of the field. Uh, most companies do not develop novel novel uh, techniques themselves. They wait for academics to do it, and then they make it uh, commercialized. And so there's a real need to do this, even if the ultimate goal is some sort of open source. But in our case, for reasons of uh, accessibility, including across the world, uh, we have the international community of microscopists, uh, we want to be able to share. We want to be able to do better than this picture on the right, where you just draw all the parts and then you throw it in some obscure journal and hope that someone sees it. We really want a living dynamic way of building and sharing uh, and interactive, uh, which is what we're working on. And so the system that we're developing is called OpenScan and it really is uh, going after one of the most powerful methods in current live cell imaging, which is laser scan microscopy, which has been mostly dominated by uh, very specialized commercial tools that we're trying to develop an open source framework that not only could anybody adopt and build, but also could easily adapt. And so this system is a combination of hardware and software. Uh, it consists of uh, components like lasers and scan mirrors and stages, uh, not unlike a lot of the motors maybe used in other open hardware projects, detectors, electronics, and then all the various uh, electronics and software to control that. And it's a collection of techniques rather than just one technique. And so we're trying to, uh, this is examples of data from this system. We're trying to collect data to really go after fundamentally what is happening in cancer. So we're seeing here in blue are cancer cells that we can see single cell. We can see submicron or less. 
So we're seeing nanometer changes in cell behavior. You can see the interaction of things you may have heard of, like metabolism or NADH or collagen. And this particular case is beautiful image, but you're actually seeing a very deadly disease. In this case, you're seeing a metastatic breast cancer tumor that's about ready to spread to the brain going from the breast. And so the ability to understand and see these techniques is incredibly powerful. And we've done it in a way that someone could recreate this in their group or extend it to do more. Uh, and there's another example of watching cells try to get onto these white fibers and they're using these wispy fibers like highways to escape the tumor. And as most of you know, metastasis or, or cancer spreading is what kills you. If it's a nice focal tumor, you can actually uh, cut it out of your body. But when it spreads like this, uh, it's very deadly. So we're trying to build systems to collect this kind of data across uh, the world with our collaborators. But these systems are very complex, lots of mirrors, and it's more than just all the parts knowing how to put them together. And one of the things we realized is it's not just about a parts list. You need to know uh, what is the uh, uh, expertise need to build these things and how to put them together. There's a lot of different variations and things that are involved in building these. And so the expertise is just as important as the parts. And one of the problems is there's no real source code in the world of building hardware. In the world of software, we're very lucky to have systems like GitHub. But in the world of uh, this kind of hardware building, if we want to build systems to create the kind of data there on the right, there is no obvious CAD format to describe the build. Uh, more than is not enough to just know what all the components are and where they go. And we really need some sort of source code system that would allow you to uh, design and share your design. And so that's what we're trying to do. And we have done this before. Um, this may not play there. Let's see if it's not playing. Well, this is a little animation just showing us build something. What this was supposed to show is these parts fly in and then you create this simple microscope. We did this successfully. Uh, I think now it's over 100 labs adopted. And it was very popular uh, called openstream.org, but it was very manual. It was a human being having to place every part and make every video. And we're trying to find ways to automate the build process so that you could take the SOLIDWORKS drawings and other kinds of things and build fly-ins and step-by-step uh, -step assembly that could change every time you got a new design without having to rebuild it manually every time. And so what we want to be able to do is uh, go to a different kind of paradigm where uh, we not only have the classic education training like the OpenSpin uh, website there, that was a very rigid specific, specified bill of materials and very low requirement expertise to a much more cutting edge where you pre-identify which space you need and have some sort of test system to figure out what the user or adopter needs to know and then allow the, uh, the person adopting it to not only adopt but also adapt. And so that's really what our project is, is trying to figure out how best to do this using OpenScan as an example, how to document the assembly process, and how to go beyond the manual process. And so we're trying to figure out ways of doing this, but we really could use help. So if anybody has ideas, please contact me. We're working with a couple of collaborators around the US of ways of doing this effectively, uh, including Thor Labs, a company has been working with us on this. Uh, but we're very interested in any feedback people have of how you could actually track a build process. Um, our current status is that we have released the software and the hardware system. We've implemented it on all our scopes, so seven systems in our lab and two on campus. And we're trying to finalize the hardware build process and come up with a companion website that has both the documentation and the hardware. And uh, we are very thankful for the Open Source Hardware Association and the Sloan Foundation, Alicia Gibb and others, uh, Alicia in uh, Oshawa, and then we had a lot of help from Ginger Zhang and Chris Kronopoulos, and Mark Tashida and Ginger Chakuma Group, and many others. And I left plenty of time for questions if you want to hear more about my craspy, or if you also want to know what's happening in the world of cancer and imaging, I'm all game for the time we have. Thank you so much. Amazing. Okay, so we do actually have a few things that came in. Um, I'm not quite sure what slide we were on for this, but Straith is wondering uh, about the, if there was a section that was an interstate Interstitium? Is that a word? <laughs> so I think he's referring to a biological term describing the fluid filled spaces that span the body. And mm -hmm. uh, I think he was referring to the slide where I showed the extra matrix. Mm -hmm. So it is actually true that the interstitium is con comprised of collagen types. So we certainly could look at that. So he's referring to the epithelial layers. 
that you might see beyond skin and organs. In our particular case, that was actually a breast cancer uh, uh, lump of the tumor, but it's very closely related to the interstitium. And certainly the concept is very closely related because both are made up of collagen enzymes. Amazing. Um, we've got a comment from Greg here who just says, uh, amazing, reminds me how many telescopes are homemade, mm -hmm. especially the very first mm -hmm. ones that led to our understanding of the universe, which is very true. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, and astronomy is uh, very much a uh, close cousin of ours. In fact, uh, astronomers and NASA have very much led to a lot of the innovations in cancer imaging. Uh, many of the same cameras and techniques that were developed for them including computational te techniques we use in cancer. So we owe a lot of debt to the uh, astronomy community for a lot of the methods. Yeah. They figured out that glass stuff. That's true. <laughs> it's wild. Uh, Straith is also wondering if there's a way to sponsor this project. Uh, yes, uh, there are several ways of doing that. Uh, if you contact me, there is a foundation account where the project can be directly sponsored, but of course also many ways of being involved in the community, including donating to the cancer projects or donating to Oshawa are all great ways of doing it. But if you want to be directly involved, just contact me, uh, that'd be fine. And is your contact information, like where can people find this? Uh, I'm very easy to reach because I'm the only guy with my last name at Wisconsin. Uh, <laughs> not, I can also put it in chat if there's a chat or... Oh, yes. Um, yeah, wait, actually, I believe I can toss your email in here because I too have access to your email. <laughs> <laughs> As sometimes chat, so I email you. <laughs> that there, I also put it in. I'm not sure who that one's in. Yeah, that would be great. Cool. Uh, and yeah, do you have any, like, if you are to leave uh, this, the, the attendees of this stream with any uh, closing message, what, what would it be? What are, you, what are you most excited to share with the community? I think that open hardware is an exciting uh, 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 community that involves many disciplines. And what's exciting is that. Uh, techniques and technologies that seem very disparate share a lot in common. And even though that, you know, Oshawa spread, you know, spans many disciplines, uh, we can learn a lot from other types of hardware in the humanities or in the, the physical sciences or the, the other, or other or business or other types of disciplines. And that can be applied to imaging. Also, you know, at the end of the day, being able to understand and characterize what makes cells tick in disease is fundamentally is going to be what's going to allow us to extend our lives to treat the disease. So the power of imaging is the only way to understand what cells do in space and time. And so there's tremendous power understanding what makes these diseases tick so you can develop good therapies. And I believe that open hardware is a, going to be a big solution to that. Amazing. Uh, we also have a question from Timon, who's wondering what pieces are actually missing for describing an optical setup that is hard to cover by a standard MCAD assembly? Yeah, so one of the challenges in these bills is knowing how they all come together and being able to, uh, we've tried that, but we need to be able to show all the parts, how they interact, and then how they come together and how a user uses them. So being able to show the sum of all the parts and how they interact has been the problem. So, but I'm Amazing. happy to talk about it as well. That makes sense. Um, and then just a few little nice comments from folks. Tim and also said that this is really cool. And then we also have Kate Hartman letting us know, thank you for this work is so important, which is very true. This is some mm -hmm. really, really big stuff. Um, it's just like a fascinating field and yeah. It's been great to be able to see the different ways that you've been exploring it over the course of the last, I guess, uh, we're going on three years now where we've been paying attention. Osh has been more involved with your work. So I guess, uh, yeah, we're, we've seen a lot of development in that time. Mm -hmm. It's been very, very exciting. 